All right, everyone, welcome to Strictly Sports. I am Jacob Brown, joined with Stephen Cashin today. We're going to do our 2020 San Diego Padres season preview, and we're going to go right into their ads and subtractions. The way we do it, we go lineup, bench, rotation, bullpen, top prospects, and we start with the ads and subtractions. So let's just start here with their ads. So they added starting pitcher Zach Davies in a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers. They also signed relief pitcher Drew Pomeranz from the Milwaukee Brewers as well. They also acquired outfielder Trent Grissom in that same trade with Zach Davies. They also acquired left hand, uh, excuse me, left fielder Tommy Pham and relief pitcher Emilio Pagan from the Tampa Bay Rays. They signed Pierce Johnson, a starting pitcher, to a two-year contract. They signed Brian Dozier to a one-year contract and outfielder Juan Lagares from the New York Mets to a minor league deal. They also acquired second baseman Jerickson Profar from Oakland on a one-year deal as well. And the guys that they lost, they traded away Hunter Renfro in that trade with the Rays. Luis Orius was also gone in the Milwaukee trade along with Eric Lauer. The Padres also traded Travis Jankowski to the Cincinnati Reds. Manuel, excuse me, uh, Manuel Margot also went in that Renfro trade. And then they let Carl Edwards Jr., Robbie Erland, Nick Margeshevis, Adam Warren, and Aaron Loop all go to other teams as well. And the San Diego Padres had a record of 70-92 and 92 last season, last place in the NL West. So let's get to their lineup. Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to lead off and play shortstop. He played 84 games. He hit 22 home runs and 53 RBIs, an on base of 379. His Woba was 398. Remember, league average is 320. So that's tremendous. Weight is run created plus of 150. Then Tommy Pham, their new acquisition, he's going to bat second and play left field. In 145 games, he had 21 home runs and 68 RBIs with a 349 Woba and a 121 weighted run created plus. Then Manny Machado went from being a superstar to a barely above league average player in 2019. At third base, he'll hit third. He hit 32 home runs and 85 RBIs with a 335 Woba in 2019 with a 108 weighted run created plus. He had a 377 Woba in 2018. And a, excuse me, yeah, so we had a 377 Woba in 2018, so that went way down. And then if you look at his 2017, he's actually closer to his 2017 self than he is to his 2018 self. In 2017, he had a 328 Woba compared to the 335 now and a 102 weighted drunk created plus compared to the 108 now. So he's actually closer to 2017, Manny Machado. And clean up and playing first base to Eric Hosmer, he's really gone down in his 30s. He's below league average in Woba and weighted drunk created plus. He also had 99 RBIs. Then Trent Grissom projected as the right fielder right now. He's the top prospect. He was the number 15 overall pick by the Milwaukee Brewers in 2015. He's 23 years old. He mashed at the minor league level, hitting 26 home runs in two levels. Josh Naylor, a top prospect, will hit sixth and play second base. He was the number 12 overall pick in 2015. Then Francisco Mejia, the switch hitting catcher, will hit seventh. And Franchi Cordero, a top prospect, will hit eighth and play center field. He's dealt with a ton of injuries. On the bench, these guys could also start Will Myers and Jurickson and Profar. They could definitely start to start the season. So, Stephen, I mean, you look at this lineup. This is a lineup that could not hit for anything last year, really. I mean, they were pretty terrible offensively. But if you look at this lineup, what do you see? They have a lot of potential this year. Um, we talked about uh, or before we started this podcast. It's like they have the most room, I think, for potential in the NL and you look at this lineup one through nine and you're kind of surprised why, how they didn't hit the ball as well last year. I think, you know, you had Tatis Jr. Who was, you know, very young uh, shortstop talk about a pure talent that he's going to be uh, the next, you know, seven, eight years. If he stays healthy and he's just a pure, he has a pure swing. He's, he gets out of the box quick, gets on base and this glove over at, at the shortstop side. I mean, it's just, it's magnificent. So uh, having him at the leadoff spot, he gets on base a ton. And then you have the addition of Tommy Pham, who I love as a Ray. And I'm going to miss him uh, playing over here in Tampa. 20 on homers, 68 RBIs. Generates enough um, you know, power, get, hits the ball hard up the middle, uses the middle of the field. And then Machado last year turned into a, a team player, a guy who, you know, I guess put their, all the egos aside and just kind of played baseball and just went at it. You know, stuck stuck to his approach, and you know, hit 32 homers. Eric Hosmer, another guy, another 20 plus homer um, batter, and and so one through four, I think you have a solid foundation there. 
And then you can mix in Will Myers in right field, uh, Yorkson Profar, another uh, guy who can, you know, had a, a kind of an off year last year. 20, well, 20 homers, not an off year, but the year before he batted around the you know, low 250s. Um, Trent Grissom, another addition, great um, from Milwaukee. So I like this Padres lineup a whole lot, and you can mix and match a whole a lot with the bench and the starters here. So a lot of good things for this uh, Padres lineup. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love this lineup if Machado can go back to being Machado because right now he's really not tremendous. I mean, he's only slightly above league average right now. I mean, you look around the league, like, you know, you just go to the Dodgers, and he is worse – than a lot of the players on their team, according to advanced stats. He's worse than Corey Seager, Jock Peterson, Max Muncy. He's worse than Mo- Moogie Betts, worse than Justin Turner. So Machado really, he went down a lot from 2018 to 2019. Now, I do think maybe that's just a transitional thing, number one. Number two, he was in a worse lineup than he was with, with the Dodgers. I know he spent time with the Orioles, who were also terrible. But, you know, at the same time, bad lineup in San Diego, uh, tough division facing tough pitching, And, you know, maybe he just felt a little relaxed, didn't feel the pressure to win. He knows he's there for 10 years and, you know, it's not a contract year anymore. And the production went down. I think he will bounce back. He's Manny Machado. I think he's a superstar player. He didn't get paid $300 million for nothing. And I think he'll get, you know, he'll come back and be the guy that they thought he could be. Eric Cosmer also, though, he's been below league average for two or three years now. Uh, That's not good. I mean, you know, I, I I love the 99 RBIs. But according to these advanced stats, they don't value RBIs. Uh, they value the collective offensive value. And Hosmer's got to get back to what he was in Kansas City. He has not been that guy in San Diego. I really look at here, the wild cards for this lineup are the young kids, the two, number, uh, the number 15 overall draft pick and the number 12 overall draft pick, Trent Grissom and Josh Naylor. If these two pan out, that gives you those two bats. That gives you Tatis is three, Fam is four, Machado coming back, that's five. That's five legitimate bats. And then you even could include Franchi Cordero in there as a center fielder who he's battled with a ton of injuries, but in the minor leagues, he's been a tremendous player uh, value wise. So this is a team in the Padres that I think offensively, they can go from being really terrible to being above league average. Yeah, for really- sure. It just it, the, the young guys, if they pan out, like you just said, that's the whole key. That's the wild card. You're, you, you don't know what you're going to get, but if they can piece it together, keep their approaches the same, Tati stays healthy. Um, Franchi Cordero, he comes out and has a great year. I mean, this this whole this whole lineup could be put put together, and then you have a few starters in that rotation that can really carry their weight too. So you complement the pitching and the hitting together, and good things will happen for this team. But if the hitting struggles again, like it did in the previous years you're going to see the same production, same win totals, and this team's not going to make the jump that, you know, their fan base oh, wants and Their to. fan base desperately wants it. I mean, they haven't won in a lot of years. I mean, I've been watching baseball since 09, and they have not made the playoffs within that time. So their their fans are certainly anxious, and they need a playoff berth. Um, I look at the rest of this this team. You mentioned Will Myers and Jerks and Profar. These are two dudes that to start the year, they might start – just because they're vets, they've been around the league, and they don't want to start Grissom and Naylor at first. I have Grissom and Naylor in my starting lineup just because I think their potential outweighs what Myers was and what Profar was at the big league level. But the Padres could be buying low here with Profar as, as, a, as a buyback candidate here. He struggled in 2019. He had 20 home runs, but, you know, 301 Woba, 89 weighted run created plus, so well below league average. But the year before, he had a way better year. Uh, he had a way better year in 2018. He was a 107 weighted drunk created plus and a 341 Woba, which is way above league average. So if they can get him to be back and be that guy, which is a 20 plus homer second baseman, switch hitter, pretty good defense. That's a valuable player. And and as far as Will Myers goes, you can just use him to complement Grissom against left-handed pitchers. You could just throw Myers out in right field. So that's how I look at this Padres lineup. We'll move on to the rotation here. And this is where it gets interesting. They have, it's a pretty decent rotation here. They have Chris Paddock leading the way. Young started a rookie year last year. 26 games started in 140 and two-thirds innings. He had a 3-3-3 ERA with a 3-9 FIP. He had 153 strikeouts with a 9.79 Ks per nine. Walks were low at 1.98 walks per nine. Then Zach Davies, they got from Milwaukee in the number two spot. 
Uh, 31 games started 159 and two thirds innings, a 3.55 ERA with a 4.56 FIP, 5.75 Ks per nine. So not necessarily a strikeout guy. Then they have Joey Lucchesi in the three spot. 30 games started 163 and two thirds innings, 4.18 ERA, 8.6 Ks per nine. This is a really interesting one. And by the way, I might be completely butchering this name. Uh, Denilson Lamette in 14 games started. That was a 4.07 ERA, but his strikeouts per nine were 12.95, which is elite. If he can be that guy in extended time, that's a valuable wild card piece in that rotation. And then the five spot could be anyone. It could be either Garrett Richards, who has not had a complete season since 2015 and hasn't thrown more than 76 innings since 2018. And then you have Mackenzie Gore, a top prospect, had a 1.02 ERA in 15 games at single A. And then they also have Cal Quantrill, another one of their pitching prospects. So that fifth rotation spot kind of up in the air. But what's your opinion on those other four spots? You know, I like a, you know, one through three. I think it's really solid. Um, Chris Paddock, you look at his numbers, uh, his whip is under a one. His strikeout per nine is really right where you want it to be. He's keeping the walks down. So as a number one starter, you really want to limit giving those free passes and, you know, really dominating being that workhorse for your rotation. And then you went out and got Zach Davies, who I like a whole lot. And, you know, adds depth to this rotation. Going off last year, at had 355 ERA. His FIP's a little high, in my opinion, but, you know, he keeps the walks down, which which is good as in, as in the two-hole two. Strikeouts per nine isn't quite where, you know, you want it to be. It's 5.75 per nine. You know, not too – you know, I'm not really too concerned with the strikeout style. I've talked about it before. You know, if you're pitching the contact, you're getting, you know, more innings, you know, pitched. He has 159 innings pitched last year versus Paddock's 140. So, showing you maybe he's pitching more to contact than other pitchers are. And then Lucchesi is another – he's a good complement in the third spot. Left-handed guy. Has some good stuff. His, his ERA is a little high for me for uh, 418, but – strikeouts are up and his walks are a little bit high. Get that down as a third, um, in the third hole there. But, you know, one through three, they can have a solid, you know, rotation there and back it up with, with Lamette and Richards comp- complimenting themselves in the four and five spot. But one through three is very solid for me. Uh, but, you know, rolling through the backside of that rotation, they'll figure things out. But I like this rotation a whole lot. Good stuff there. Um, and, you know, they'll piece Yeah, together. I think this sure. is a lot like their lineup. If it fully pans out the way that they want it to, this is a really good rotation. You look around the league, it's better than Atlanta's rotation. It's uh, it's at par with probably St. Louis's. It's, it's maybe be on par with Cincinnati's. Definitely better than the Cubs rotation. So as you're looking around the league here, if everything pans out, and, and you know, it might already be better than some of those teams – uh, so that that's significant. If you're a Padres fan, you're looking at this starting rotation. You're saying, you know what? We've got some arms here, and then we have some arms coming with Mackenzie Gore, who is the number five prospect in Major League Baseball. So no schlub there. He's a top five Major League prospect. Not top five for the Padres, top five in the big league. So when he gets here, he's going to be huge. But I think if they get Garrett Richards going, this is a dude, when he was pitching with the Angels, he was lights out. He was filthy when he was healthy. But – he can't stay healthy, Stephen. Yeah, I was looking at his stats last night, and, you know, it was impressive. You know, in 2015, he had 200 innings. That's a lot. That's a lot in today's uh, – that's a lot in today's game of baseball, and it's wearing on your arm. So it contributes to why he hasn't stayed healthy a little bit, in my opinion. Um, but that could be a wild card there for them, that rotation. If he stays healthy, um, which is key, if you're not in, if you're not healthy, you're not valuable to your team, and you're always on the bench, you're always rehabbing, can't get any consistency. But his strikeouts per nine is high; it's at a ten point two. His ERA is about three five. So, I mean, if he can stay healthy for this team, he could be a solid four starter even. And going back to Lamet, um, his strikeout per nine was, was a twelve nine. Only issue was I had with him was his he had twelve homers given up Oof. in fourteen games started, so he's almost averaging a home run a home run a game. You know that comes along with you know getting more reps, working on your stuff, critiquing a little bit. But one through five, you and you look at it, if they stay healthy, they could be one of the best uh, rotations in the league if they all stay healthy, work on their stuff. So some good things and here. Not just the staff. starting rotation. We look at the bullpen too. There's some dudes out here. I mean, you have we'll start from the bottom up. 
We'll go Luis Perdomo. Pretty good start. He used to be a starting pitcher, but due to the amount of starting pitchers the Padres have, he's just the odd man out. They sent Perdomo to the bullpen. They have Craig Stammen, who spent a few years with the Nationals, but he's been with the Padres, I think, for two or three years now. He had 82 innings last year for the Pods in 78 games, 3-2-9 ERA, eight strikeouts per nine, not too shabby. He's a multiple-inning reliever type guy. They also have Matt Strom, mixed it in with starter reliever. He's also a multiple-inning guy. He had 33 innings as a reliever, 3.27 ERA in those innings with 7.5 Ks per nine, walks down at 1.3. Then they have Emilio Pagan, who you know very well, Stephen, from the Tampa Bay Rays. He was lights out with Tampa Bay in 70 innings, 66.31 ERA, a 3.30 FIP, 12.34 Ks per nine. That's crazy with 1.67 walks and 20 saves. Then Drew Pomeranz. See, this is the interesting thing. You might look at his total stats and say, eh, they're not that good. I don't know why he got that contract because he got paid four years, $34 million. What they're looking at here is what he did as a reliever. When he, when he went to Milwaukee, they put him in the bullpen, 28 and two thirds innings in the bullpen, 1.88 ERA, 15.7 Ks per nine. That is lights out. That's Josh Hader level. And then you look at another Josh Hader guy, Kirby Yates, the closer, 60 and two thirds innings, this is a real stat line, 1.19 ERA, a 1.30 fit with 14.98 Ks per nine, 1.93 walks in per nine, 0.30 home runs per nine. I mean, this is, this is insane. And this isn't just 2019 for Kirby Yates. In 2018, he had a 2.14 ERA. So that's two years in a row from Kirby Yates. Stephen, what are your thoughts on this pen? I mean, this bullpen kind of blows you away when you look at it, and people don't realize how stacked this bullpen was. I mean, I talked about Kirby Yates all of last year, a guy yeah. who used to play for the Rays, go figure. Um, and I, and so I'm like, he was just dominant. Every time he was out there, it was almost automatic save, automatic save. Same with Pagan, too. Earlier in the year with the with Tampa, he was just, you know, he is a guy who just comes out there on the mound and goes, I'm going to throw my stuff. Good luck hitting it. And he was dominant through three quarters of the season, kind of worn down there at the end just because he had so many innings thrown and he was just out there almost every night it seemed like but they got a good one in Pagan hard throwing right hander has some good stuff has a good has a good slider and going back to Kirby Yates a you know 1.19 ERA it's almost unheard of you you're not scoring runs off this guy 14 almost 15 strikeouts per nine innings he's not giving up the long ball and you look at Drew Pomerantz too and a lefty that was a starter, and maybe they found you know his true calling in the bullpen there. I tell, I say it all the time. Maybe he wasn't meant to be this long starter. One point eight ERA out of the bullpen, fifteen point seven strikeouts per nine. Like you said, it's like hater like. So having that one two three punch with Yates, Pomerantz, and Pagan going out there and just throwing their stuff and just you know unloading on guys. It's just they could be deadly when it comes to the, you know, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine innings. I mean, it's like Yan- Yankees-esque when they were dominant with, with Batances, Chapman, and, yeah. you know, you go down the line. When you got to that seven inning with the Yankees, the game was over. And so you can look at that with the with the Padres here. If you get to the seventh inning and you roll out Pagan, Pomerantz, and Yates, game's almost yeah. over with their numbers that they have. It's just, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, and and even I, I like even 2019 with the Yankees, there was a stat I saw. They only lost two games when they went with their six, seven, eight, nine combo of Canely, Britton, Adovino, Chapman. When they threw those four out there, they only lost two games the entire mm-hmm. year. Uh, so that, that's, you know, that is what the Padres can get to for sure. I mean, Kirby Yates is better than Chapman. Drew Pomeranz might be more valuable than Britton if he keeps pitching like this. Pagan might be the Adam Adovino of this bullpen. That's that's how really good this bullpen could be. That's a great comparison. Yeah, it just it's it, to me it's impressive that they can they, you know get a yeah, couple more pieces in that bullpen, which they have. They have enough. They have enough. Yeah, they have enough bullets out there that they can use and really just and not tax those guys early in the season. That's key too. We talked about it earlier. It's saving these arms for later in the season when games are tight. You know, not throwing him out there in, in, you know, four or five run games where, you know, there's a comfortable cushion there. But, you know, this bullpen can really carry weight for this team and be a vital asset for them to potentially maybe sneak into a wild card if the hitting goes well and everything, you know, falls into place for them. But, 
you know, I like this, this Padres team is, it is really is. Kind it's of slept totally on, slept on. Opinion, and, and like altogether. I said at the beginning of the, of the pod, I mean, if everything goes right, they have the highest ceiling, you know, if they're, if everything kind of goes the same for them, they'll just be the same team. But we've talked about it. If the, if, if, if these logical jumps happen, you know, meaning Machado comes back to who he was, Tatis plays a full season. That's a lot of value. You get Grissom and Naylor in these starters come in on another year. Richards comes back. You're talking if everything pans out. This is a pretty damn good team. And then you look at their prospects here. We already mentioned Mackenzie Gore. They have the number 25 top 100 prospect shortstop CJ Abrams, 19 years old at single A, hit 393 and 34 games with three homers, 22 ribbies. So that's pretty impressive from a 19 year old to go right to the minor leagues. I mean, he's younger than us, Stephen, hitting 393. Then you have Luis Patino, number 27 overall right handed pitcher. 2.57 ERA, 94 and two thirds last season. So he's on the way. They also have a catching prospect, Luis Campusano, which if Mejia doesn't pan out, maybe this is a dude who shoots up the minor league levels because he hit 325 with 15 homers and 52 ribbies, which is way better than what Mejia did at the big league level. And then they have Taylor Trammell, the number 15, 57 overall prospect in the outfield. And uh, he's kind of on the way, decent prospect, may or may not pan out. But you look at these prospects, the Padres even have talent coming on the way. Yeah, a lot of young guys. So, you know, you look at 19-year-old Abrams there and still a long way to go. You don't want to start these guys too early because you want them to get more reps in, in that farm system. And then you got Patino, the right-handed throwing 20-year-old. Great numbers, two, two 570 RA and, and A and double A ball. Um, you know, small sample size in double A, but a ton of innings thrown in, in, in a the A level. But – you know, they're give these guys a maybe a year or two more. It just depends on how you, it pans out every year. You know, you get Abrams out there one more year, and he if he hits the same, if he hits 300, 350 again, you can almost call him up because, I mean, that's you back it up twice, then you know, okay, it's for real. Same with Patino. You go out there, throw the same stat line out there, and you're ready to go. So baseball, it can happen really quick. You can have some setbacks, you know, you know, pray that there's no injuries there along the way. But you know, top two prospects right there in their in their farm system. I mean, they're they're in good hands if if, if these guys. Yeah, really and keep I'm not saying this the way is they possible, but you know, C.J. Abrams is a shortstop, so that means he's blocked immediately by Tatis, clearly. But they also have a log jam in there. They've got mm-hmm. Machado at third. If Naylor pans out, he's the dude because you know he's number one. You know, he's a number twelve overall pick. But where does Abrams go? I mean, maybe they could throw him out in center field if Franchi Cordero doesn't pan out. I mean, that, that really would be one of the only spots where Abrams could, could come. So the Padres have a lot of trade uh, leeway here to where they can tell their teams, hey, we've got this number 27 overall shortstop here. We don't really have a spot for him, and they can get some value for a guy like that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, some of these teams that load up on prospects year in and year out, you know, you can use that at leverage as, you know, you tra- use those trade assets. I mean, they're valuable guys are looking for young like talent that they don't have like we looked at milwaukee a team that doesn't quite have the prospects in their system to get big league ready hey maybe they go out and try to get a guy like you know for example like that so you can package them up in a deal and you can get a great return that guys are yeah i mean you mentioned the brewers they actually just did that with the brewers i mean the zach davies trade is example one you know they traded luis Mm orius second base shortstop top prospect they traded him to get a really valuable number two starter in Zach Davies. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at these teams that do this and it's, it's, it's very smart with these, how, how these scouts do it. I mean, there's kind of a, a method to the madness and, you know, loading these up, you have a log jam. So uh, you just go, boom, Hey, we're going to package them up. Thank you. And then you get good big league guys in return. It's, it's a, it's a great way to do business in baseball. So what, what grade are you, you giving them for games. the off season? I give them, I would almost say an A. I mean, you go in and got Emilio Pagan, you got Tommy Pham, both from Tampa, and you that two spots with Pham and can really produce. Pagan just solidifies your bullpen. You went and got, you know, Palm Palm yeah, in a four year deal correct um, in the off season. Yeah, and so they got him in the off season as well. Yorkson Profar. I mean, I give them an A. I mean, they did a great job in trying to, you know build this roster around what they already have, the young talent they have. And uh, well, I, there's I no need me, for me to repeat that. I mean, I agree with you 100%. I think this is an A. I mean, they upgraded in every area on offense, starting pitcher, bullpen. 
what else can you do? I mean, they have a stacked prospect system. I mean, the farm system, I mean, they, they have nothing else to do. I mean, this, this has to be an A. Where do you have them finishing in the division? Right now, I have them in third place. Um, you know, we talked about how, how loaded the, the top end of this division is with the Dodgers and Arizona. The next best team is the Padres. I mean, you look at it, potentials there. If everything lines up, they could even go and compete with Arizona and try to be a wild card team. And that's if everything goes according to plan. But I like them in the third spot right now. Um, you know, that could obviously change the course of the season. I like everything that this team has and everything that they're about. I agree. Got uh, I am the third. Right and, yeah, they, they could totally challenge Arizona for that spot if everything goes out. I mean, you know, you've got and probably equal starting rotations if everything works, equal lineups if everything works. Uh, Arizona's a really underrated team, and we'll get to them. Uh, so we'll do them right before our Dodgers pod in a few days. You guys will hear that one. We're really high on Arizona. Um, but San Diego, yeah, I agree with you. Third place team, they'll be contending for a wild card spot. At the moment, I did a ranking of National League teams. I have them at nine just because I, I do think that they can be better than the Cardinals. It's just let's see it. You know, this team won 70 games last year. Cardinals were a first place team. That's the only thing I'm waiting for with this Padres team. Just do it first. Yeah, because you can talk, you know, we as sports people, you know, you can talk a ton about, you know, stats and you can project things and everything until you see on the field and you see results. Um, then you can start being legit about, like, who can this team really do it? So, you know, exciting stuff that they did um, in the offseason, made a lot of good moves. And, you know, once you see it, then we can start getting on that, you know, on that train and just really – 100 percent. so that'll do it for our san diego padres season preview you can listen on a bunch of platforms you can listen on apple podcasts spotify google podcasts and more follow us on strictly sports our twitter account at strict sports fau Uh, for Stephen cash and i'm jacob brown and we'll see you tomorrow with our what is it colorado rockies podcast yeah colorado rockies podcast all right guys we'll see you next time rockies yep all right steven i'll call you back